Hey everybody, this is Andrew Isley. Thanks for tuning into this last video tutorial on um, Reason. This is uh, sort of our final mastering uh, suite. Essentially, mastering is the polish that you would put on your track. Um, a lot of people would say that uh, you really shouldn't master your own tracks. Uh, if you can afford to have a mastering engineer, you should send it out. It's really good to get a uh, an objective third party who's not uh, emotionally invested in the tracks. That sometimes is a problem when you're um, when you've been working on songs for so long. You get kind of uh, you've fallen in love with the way they sound, or you think they sound, or you think they should sound. And uh, a mastering engineer will will be able to correct any anomalies or problems. Um, really they're just there to to make it sound as good as possible um don't ever if you're ever in a studio and someone says oh we'll just fix it you know we'll fix it in the mastering or we'll fix it in the mix uh that's uh that's a big fallacy uh it's always important to get the best mix possible before sending it to the mastering engineer um that being said uh if you're not sending it to the mastering engineer uh reason comes with uh, this mastering suite, which you can see here, uh, the default mastering suite. This is uh, set up if you um, if it's not set up in, in your session, like in your your uh, your setup, you can always add it. Um, I always keep it as part of my um, in my preferences for my my custom setup. Um, but uh, if you wanted to create it, you'll notice it's right down here: M class mastering suite combi. Uh, that's what this box is right here. So it has uh, dedicated knobs for some of the, the basic controls, uh, in essence, just to keep things as simple as possible. Um, I used a lot of these controls as opposed to going in and manually adjusting things. But, uh, you know, feel free to explore. That's, uh, that's what this is all about. But you, as you can see, uh, there are four different mastering effects. Um, it does matter what order they go in. Uh, it's from top to bottom, um, so right now we're going through an equalizer, then through a stereo imager, then through a compressor, and then through a maximizer, which is basically a limiter. Um, I always, I tend to have the, the maximizer on at all times, even, you know, at the very beginning of my song, everything else I turn off, and then I'll turn on towards the end. Um, again, I talk about all this in the book, but uh, as you can see here, we've got... Um, the loudness curve. So as I adjust this, you'll see that it's actually adjusting uh, the gain of the uh, low shelf and the um, parametric two in terms of its frequency. Uh, the EQ boost, uh, if you turn it on, you can control sort of the, the frequency of that EQ boost. So if you, if you wanted to emphasize something, whether it's in the high frequencies, uh, I tend to to, uh, to not use that. Um, you have the compressor in order of turning that on or off. You see it's sort of adjusting that over here uh, and how much compression you want to add. And um, finally, you have the master gain, which is actually uh, controlled with the, uh, the output of the compressor. Um, I went ahead and... and uh, use the the maximizer your maximizer is like a it's a limiter it's a brick wall limiter it will allow your tracks to give the perception of being louder without ever going over zero db always remember that uh, the zero db in digital is uh really unforgiving if you go past that threshold uh, you get into digital distortion and it sounds really terrible um, so these are just different things that uh we can use. Let's go ahead and listen to the track. What I like to do in terms of uh, a mastering session or mastering my own tracks per se is I'll find a section of the song that's really busy, that has uh, as much going on as possible. So like this second half of our song seems to be pretty busy. Uh, I'll move this over here. We'll set up a loop. go through and bypass everything so right now this is uh, as if I bypassed the entire thing 
Now I could increase the my level. Another thing you can do is to look at your meters on your hardware interface. So you always want to make sure that you're not uh, going over zero dB. And at this point, we're nowhere near close, to, even close to going to zero dB. So there, I just clipped. That's what we want to avoid. Now I could do it this way. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And uh, we'll use our mastering suite to see if we can't make it sound a little bit better. Um, so I'll turn on the EQ. Now I could use the loudness curves. And less is more. If you wanted to emphasize a, a particular frequency, you could. I didn't really find it necessary. Um, with our stereo imager, I'll go ahead and turn it on. The stereo imager is actually broken up into two different uh, sections. You have the, the low band and the high band. Uh, low band, I push more towards the mono because low frequencies, if you widen them out, they get really thin. So you want to keep those kind of uh, narrow. And then this is your crossover. This is the frequency at which the, the low and the high. And then under your high band, you can widen that. Again, if you widen it too much, it kind of loses all definition. What's cool over here is you can solo the high band. And you can solo the low band. Next thing we can look at is our compressor. Go ahead and turn it on. Now compressors compressor's job is to make its louder sound softer and its softer sounds louder. Um, I'm going to bypass these for a second. So we're just listening to the compressor at the moment. So the way I approach working with a compressor is uh, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. What I like to do is uh, set the threshold. I'm going to bring my ratio all the way up, my attack and my release all the way down so they're at their fastest settings. And then I set the threshold where I'm getting lots of compression so I can really hear it. Now that sounds pretty bad, but at least I can hear what's going on with the compressor. So I'm going to increase my attack. The longer attack, the more of the original transient we'll get through. So we'll get more of a pop out of it. Now the other thing is the release. We want to make sure that we can find the rhythm. Um, if I set it too high, you can hear it pumping. Like it's not ever getting a chance to, to fully um, recover. So we need to find that. I'm going to back off now on the ratio. So I'm really aiming for about minus four. So that's how much gain reduction is happening right there. So it's, it's between minus two and minus four. Being that we're at a four to one ratio. So a four to one, that means 
for every 4 dB it goes over the threshold, it outputs 1 dB. 2 to 1, 4 to 1, infinity. Um, the next thing that we can do is, uh, now that we've set our compressor, I can increase the gain now to close to 4 dB, because that's how much we've we've lost. Now right now I don't there's a soft knee. The soft knee is uh, we'll sound a little more musical. So I'm gonna turn back on the other effects. And last but not least is our mastering, the uh, maximizer. settings here we can get our track as loud as possible but without going over into the zero the digital clipping so that's a pretty good start um, it's essentially uh, how I approach things in terms of getting the track sounding as good as possible so at this point uh, what we want to do is mix our track down so what I'm going to do is grab the uh, the left and the right locators, and we want to put them. Just remember your right locator is where. Well, if we're doing the song, it's going to be the end, the E. There's there's uh, the loop. Like if you look under your file, you'll see export song as an audio file, export loop as an audio file. So song is going to start from the very beginning and go to the E as an ending, and loop would be your left and your right locator. So you don't even have to worry about the, le the left and the right locators. Um, but what we want to make sure is that we're not cutting off any reverb tails at the end. So if you cut it off any earlier, what you're going to end up doing is having this really you hear that nice long tail and all of a sudden it just cut off it stops and it sounds really abrupt and uh, that's not what you're you're looking for you want your, your reverbs to, to ring out naturally into silence so it's okay if there's a little bit of tail at there at the end so at this case you've got um, the beginning of your song and the ending of your song set up so now we can just go up and do export song as audio file <coughs> now we'll want to uh, we want to name this, this song, so we'll call this uh, Reason Song 1. And just move it over. So I called it Reason Song 1, and I'm going to put it on my desktop. And uh, audio format, you can do AIFF or WAVE. It doesn't really matter. Uh, AIFF is the standard for Mac. WAVE is the standard for... PC, they're both uh, equal in terms of quality. Um, they just have different headers, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, now we can hit save, and it will bring up another dialog box. Now, if you're planning on bringing this or, or sending this to, uh, first of all, if you're going to send this to a mastering engineer, you probably wouldn't have used any of those mastering effects, or very little. Uh, you'd want to whatever if you're sending it to a, a mastering engineer you want to leave at least 5 db of uh of headroom meaning it, the output should be minus 5 uh or or lower even sometimes uh call your mastering engineer and ask him what he wants 
uh, that would be my suggestion. But if you're doing it yourself, then um, that's where these audio export options will come in handy. Uh, you want to make sure that you, you know, you've set up your mastering suite, and then you have the option. If you're planning on bringing this into a, another track, or if you're putting this onto a DVD for high definition audio, you can select 24-bit uh, um, and bounce it down. You can bounce it up to 192 kilohertz, which is great. But let's say you wanted to put this onto a CD, so you can play it in your car or at uh, a club if you're DJing or whatever. Um, CDs are 44,100 samples per second, and they run at 16-bit. Um, if any of your samples, any of your session was uh, recorded or worked um, working in 24-bit, then you're going to want to use this thing called Dither. Dither is, uh, uh, in layman's terms, it's how we can get from a 24-bit file down to a 16-bit file without any noticeable generation loss. If you just go from 24 to 16 bits without using Dither, uh, and you've got uh, a 24-bit 24, uh, 24 session, um, what you're doing is lopping off the top 8 bits, which will compromise the sound. Um, but by using Dither, it allows you to get it down to 16 bits, and there's no generation loss. You won't even notice it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and, ahead and hit Export. And our song will bounce down. It's uh, not in real time. It does it offline, so it's uh, faster than as if this song was playing. Go ahead and hit export, and our song will bounce down. And that about wraps up um, these the series of tutorials. Be sure and uh, check out the advanced book, uh, which has a lot more information in regards to synthesis and uh, just more advanced uh, arrangement techniques. And we go a little bit deeper in terms of mixing and all of that. So it's uh, it's a good book, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. I hope you've learned a lot from this one. Um, my name is Andrew Isley. Thanks for watching. And uh, drop me a line. Hit me up. Uh, you can get me at uh, Andrew Morphous, M-O-R-P-H-O-U-S, at gmail.com. And uh, thanks.